Greetings and salutations. It's me, Colin. I'm proud to announce that Colin's Last Stand has a brand new weekly podcast all about PlayStation. It's called Sacred Symbols, and it's co-hosted by comedian, YouTuber, and social commentator Chris Raygun. If you liked my old shows, Podcast Beyond and P.S. I Love You XOXO, then Sacred Symbols is made for you. It's a hardcore PlayStation podcast for hardcore PlayStation fans and covers all the news, new releases, and happenings of the day. You can subscribe to Sacred Symbols on iTunes, Google Play, and other podcast services or at SoundCloud.com slash Sacred Symbols. Each episode will also be posted here on YouTube in audio-only format. If you want to access each episode of Sacred Symbols three days early and without ads, as well as gain other special perks like being able to contribute questions to the show, please consider supporting Collins Last Stand on Patreon at patreon.com slash Collins Last Stand. Remember, supporting CLS on Patreon nets you perks, early access, and more for all of CLS's podcasts, including the Retro Series Knockback, the Eclectic Interview Podcast Fireside Chats, and even this year's SideQuest. Thank you for your kindness, generosity, and support. Without you, CLS couldn't and wouldn't exist. But enough chatter. On to the show. For 25 years, there's been a debate brewing among the Mega Man faithful. Is classic Mega Man the best Mega Man has to offer, or is its offshoot series Mega Man X better? Yeah, there are weirdos out there that call Mega Man Legends or Mega Man Battle Network or even Mega Man Star Force their favorites, but those people are a tiny minority. The classic versus X argument, however, is one that has real teeth. And what's funny is that I've always been most vociferous that the so-called classic run of games, minus 7 and 8, which fall flat, easily best X. But after extensively playing the Mega Man X Legacy Collection over the last few days, the esteem in which I hold the more futuristic X franchise has increased tremendously. I still think the classic run is superior, but the space between has tightened greatly. I always thought X was awesome in its own right, specifically the SNES trilogy, but now I think those games constitute something truly special, something totally worth revisiting and enjoying anew. Mega Man X Legacy Collection, which offers players Super Nintendo's Mega Man X, X2, and X3, as well as PlayStation's X4 in a single, affordable, and surprisingly slick package, is actually only half of Capcom's current generation X-related offering. There's a Mega Man X Legacy Collection 2 as well, which packages PlayStation's X5 and X6, and PlayStation 2's X7 and X8. You can buy the collections separately, or you can buy them as a bundle for far cheaper. If you're interested in only one or the other, I recommend that you still buy the bundle, as over the time this video goes live, the price discrepancy is minor, and X Legacy Collection 2 has plenty of cool stuff to offer as well. But I want this review to focus only on the first Mega Man X Legacy Collection, because that compilation of four games truly shines. I was so riveted that I literally platinumed the collection in only a few days, no easy feat to be sure. And yes, it has a platinum trophy. Thanks for listening, Capcom. The original Mega Man X first launched on SNES in early 1994, and it was a bit of a curiosity. Released smack dab in the middle of the Super Nintendo's life cycle, Mega Man X was actually launched after Mega Man 5 on NES, but before Nintendo itself opted to publish NES's Mega Man 6 stateside. So it didn't only represent something new to existing Mega Man fans, it represented something new while we were still playing and would still get to play what we were already used to. We could compare and contrast in real time, and we did. X stood out not only because of its lovely soundtrack, beautiful sprites, and other aesthetic improvements NES kids like me could only dream about, it also broke wide open the classic Mega Man formula. Mega Man X functioned identically to the original run in its inherent non-linearity, but now you could upgrade Mega Man's armor by finding hidden capsules. You could increase his life bar by discovering obscured heart containers spread around the various stages. You could even collect E-tank-like sub-tanks, receptacles that could infinitely replenish X's health so long as you found the surplus curative pellets you needed to fill them up. If the original Mega Man was all about speed and style, and it was, then X was about discovery and backtracking. X's emphasis on customization just made sense. It was a logical evolutionary step in the most Darwinian use of the term. It kept almost everything that makes Mega Man work and brought it in a more complex direction. Some people authentically think that the outcome is truly better. I could see why they think that, even if I don't quite agree. But people loved X, and so we got more. SNES's X2 and X3 followed in the West in 1995 and 1996 respectively, and X4 landed on PlayStation in 1997. If you're a Mega Man rookie, the key thing to understand about the two primary sub-franchises is that they revolve around exploiting specific weaknesses in enemies, best explained by the classic decider Rock, Paper, Scissors. As an example, while Rock crushes scissors, paper covers rock. In Mega Man and Mega Man X, you're presented with typically eight stages that can be taken on in any order. At the end of each stage is a boss that, once defeated, will surrender his weapon for you to use. If you can find his comrade that's weak to his weapon, it'll make defeating that boss easier, and so on and so forth. Meanwhile, a majority of boss weapons will do minimal or no damage to other bosses. It's the metagame at the center of Mega Man. Finding, using, and swapping those weapons is essentially the series' very soul. Gameplay is grueling. These games are tough, and they get tougher as they go along. 
So if you thought the classic Mega Man games were too hard, or if their difficulty turned you off, then you really don't want anything to do with Mega Man X anything. But like with the classic series, there's a rhythm here for you to find, a pocket for you to settle into. There's something really special about executing the perfect long jump by rolling your fingers over the circle and X buttons just so, or taking out a boss with a well-aimed charge shot just in the nick of time. For the most part, these games are fair. Cheap death is incredibly uncommon. Everything hinges on you. From a design perspective, these games are world-class, not only in their visual and sonic aesthetic, but most importantly in the way the stages themselves are laid out and structured, the way enemies are positioned, the nature in which bosses act and react. The beauty of the Mega Man X Legacy Collection is that it places these four exceptional games next to each other, not only to play and enjoy, but to study and learn from. A strength that the X series holds over the original franchise, particularly through the lens of the era in question, not to mention the genre, is story. The classic Mega Man franchise barely has a story. It's largely told in instruction manual write-ups and short in-game blurbs, often contradicts itself, and sometimes makes little sense. Fans have filled in the hole since the dawn of the internet to at least bring some much-needed clarity, but no one truly loves Mega Man for its story, though the story has incredible promise if only fleshed out properly. X's story, on the other hand, while far from being high literature, at least attempts to give what is otherwise an excellent, beautifully controlling side-scrolling shooter some depth and context. This isn't even common now for like-minded games, and it certainly wasn't common 25 years ago. This is the very thing missing from the classic run that would make those games somehow even better, but X has plot, and it's pretty cool. X is a compelling, albeit comically righteous character, while his mysterious companion Zero and antagonist Sigma have far more texture than Proto Man or Dr. Wily, even if Proto Man and Dr. Wily are far cooler characters at a glance. Replacing the colorful and sometimes zany robot masters in Mega Man X are the so-called Mavericks, robotic enemies that replace the man-naming scheme of the old franchise, like Cut Man or Metal Man or Gemini Man, with mostly animal names instead. Chill Penguin, Bubble Crab, Tunnel Rhino. Each has a theme stage with a few hidden items that you can sometimes grab your first time through, though you'll often have to backtrack to stages later on with new weapons and items in your arsenal to grab everything. The boss fights themselves are masterclasses in design, something classic Mega Man began and X proudly continues, and the replayability here is significant. Can you beat the entire game without using special weapons, except where mandatory? Are you able to get all the way to and through Sigma without dying? Do you think you can beat the game without protective armor, or heart tanks, or using subtanks? The four X games in the collection share that identical complexion, deep, thoroughly engaging, and often difficult side-scrolling shooters that let you craft your own way through the experience to your specifications. I consider myself very, very good at these games, but hadn't played X3 and X4 specifically since college, and they're harder than I remember. Granted, I'm pretty sure I was better at games when I was 12 or 20 than I am now. To be honest, my right hand is killing me, and no, not for that reason, you pervert, I'm a lefty anyway. Nonetheless, these games will eat newer, less experienced, or less skilled players alive, so be warned. The X Legacy Collection isn't only about the games themselves, though. It's also about all of the accoutrements that come along with the games. For starters, you can play the Japanese Rockman X version of each game. Rockman is Mega Man's name in his native Japan, but there's far more to it than that. There's a museum chock full of art, concepts, and information. You can listen to the game's full soundtracks. You can even play around with borders, perspectives, filters, and more. If you're a Mega Man X fan, there's a ton for you to do here. And if you're simply eager to play and learn as you go, this is the definitive Mega Man X package, no doubt about it. The biggest addition, though, is the challenge mode, which pits X against two bosses at once across numerous matchups and difficulty levels, taken not only from X, X2, X3, and X4, but from X5 and X6 as well. What I love here is that Capcom obviously put care, effort, and attention into this. This isn't something that just materializes and happens. They could have easily not done this mode at all, packaged the games together in some rudimentary way, and shoved it out the door, but they didn't, and that's pretty cool. Load times are short, menus are slick, fluid, and easy to navigate, and everything makes sense where it is as you find it. It's not to say that classic Mega Man Legacy collections were bad, they were awesome with their own challenge modes to boot. It's just that there's an extra layer of polish here. It starts with the attention to the little details, ends with the inclusion of a platinum trophy, and sandwiches all of the other goodness directly between. Mega Man X Legacy Collection is a wonderful compilation of wonderful games, and is absolutely worth the price of admission. It makes me yearn for other games and franchises that deserve similar treatment, not only from Capcom, but from other publishers and stakeholders too. A Castlevania collection, anyone? How about a Final Fantasy 1 through 9 collection? And then there's the question of the long-awaited Mega Man X9. Could that be in the cards? Mega Man 11 is coming out in just a few months. Maybe we'll learn more soon. Let's hope.